party. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Bobby, and today we're playing some more totally accurate Bertil Simulator. Today I want to try out the sandbox mode. Uh, we're going to put together, I guess, some interesting matches. Although, to be perfectly honest, I'm not too creative, so it would help a lot if you guys would suggest some uh, some setups, and I'd be able to use that for the video, for the coming video. And uh, for this video, we'll just uh, see what crappy um, inventions I made, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's hit Sandbox. It's a mode I've been looking forward to, and uh, I think it should be quite explanatory as to what it is, but if not, then you'll find out shortly. I'm quite curious as to what kind of uh, units can take on other units. Uh, let's say we got Barbarians and Farmers. They're both uh, uh, 20. Who would win in a fight? A whole row of Farmers or a whole row of the Barbarians? I'm quite curious. I would say that the uh, farmers have got the advantage of having pitchforks, thereby having a longer range. But the barbarians seem to uh, excel in pure strength, I guess, then. All right, if I'm betting my money, I'd say the barbarians are going to win. Look at them. Oh, they actually don't have a shabby range at all. Oh, look at the pitchforks coming up. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, it's, it's actually the farmers that are going to win. And not by a little bit either. My god. Well, that's something. That's something I wouldn't have expected. Alright, so you'd better be uh, you'd be bet better off using farmers than uh, barbarians. That's good to know. Next up is an entire row of spearmen and an entire row of footmen. Let's see who's the better one of them too. I mean, it would get... I guess it would depend on the situation, but... Thinking of the previous battle, I would say the spearmen... Are gonna win. Oh no, it's actually the footmen that are winning. So when would you use a spearman then and when a swordsman? That's uh oh, that's quite something I wouldn't have actually expected. So it's not the same logic you can pull behind the other units, I guess. Okay, so I wonder how well they um they counter shieldmen, I guess? I mean I would I would imagine the shieldmen being able to uh Well, they'd probably lose. I don't know, because they, they, they do cost 60 instead of 50, so I don't know. They're, they're more expensive, but it seems like the the footmen are going to win by far. Huh. Right, I wonder how well they um, they do when uh, they have spearmen behind them, because they, I used this uh, in the campaign, this tactic, and it seemed to be effective. Oh my god, we absolutely butcher the footmen. It would be very nice if that was like an oversight of the uh, the results of the battle, but uh, this is actually nothing surprising, I guess. We have double the men, so that is actually not fair. Maybe if I add another row of uh, of footmen, All right? There we go. So now we have an equal amount of men. Performance is actually tanking already, or at least taking a hit. There we go. Oh my god. It feels like they're taking a, hit, a heavy hit. Let's see, I, I think that red is still winning. So there's certainly an advantage in having a diversity of units. Huh. I mean, who would have thought that that wouldn't give any benefit? So that wouldn't yield any benefit? Okay. Huh. Well, let's take a look at uh, chariots then. I, uh, I always quite like those. I know having a whole row of chariots isn't really fair. Oh, they, they all go and uh, attack the row at the same place. It's kind of silly. Oh, really? The blue have a victory now? That's kind of silly. How effective are chariots to begin with? My god. I'm curious as to if the uh, actual charge length is any benefit. And it did seem to do more damage, but the footmen are <laughs> easily going to win again. Oh my god, look at that. That's an outright mess. But it's nothing terrible, actually, uh, when you think about it. <laughs> Look at that one horseman. The horse, the horses keep on fighting for some weird reason. Why would they if their master is already dead? That's quite weird. All right, since nothing can take them on, I guess we're going to take these uh, ballistas and shoot these guys from afar. See what kind of mess we're going to create. Oh my god, I haven't used the ballistas too much, actually, for the uh, campaign levels. 
I'm uh, pretty sure the swordsmen are gonna gonna have this victory. How many ballistas do you need to take out a row of uh, two rows of footmen? My God. I'm guessing that is due to um, that only being ballistas. So I wonder what happens when you add a let's say a row of peasants. All right, so that gives us some uh, meat th to grow in uh, to throw in the meat grinder. We're mostly, we're mostly hitting up our own guys. Oh my god, oh my god, that is... Jesus. Okay, that's an outright catastrophe, but I think you need more... Uh, more bait than just a row of peasants for these footmen to be... Uh, to be taken down by ballistas. Okay, so I was quite curious about this. I'm gonna set up a row of ballista and or ballista, I guess, and a row of catapults to finally find out which one of them are actually better. There we go. We've got all sorts of ballistas and the catapults. I think the uh, catapults stand a good chance because they uh, they hit forwards. But one thing I noticed in the campaign is that the um, that the ballistas weren't actually downed by one hit of the catapults. But yeah, it seems like the catapults are the ones that are going to win. <laughs> Alright, so we got a, a row of cannons, a row of ballistas, and a row of... Uh, what are they called? Catapults. <laughs> well, that's kind of overkill. It looks like uh, the peasants are actually going to reach the cannons. If they're going to be able... Oh my god, so much travel. It's like a freaking earthquake. Uh, let's see how well they hold up against shieldmen. Okay, we've got 100 shieldmen up there. <laughs> I'd say they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. It doesn't really matter what you have. Look at that. It's it's just been blown out of the park, quite literally. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, what is what is that? What are you doing? What are you... Okay, let's see. The shoot one are actually getting around, and this is quite annoying. Let's zoom out. I mean, it's pre-alpha for a reason. Oh, look at all the shields lying around. Right, I'm actually quite curious what happens when you have, like, uh, full chariots coming at the uh, catapults and such. Will they be able to reach? Because normally what happens is there's a, a kind of a defensive row in front of the catapults and such. But now I actually want to uh, I want to see if, if cavalry can take down artillery and such. So let's check that out. Okay, got chariots in a wedge formation. Let's see how well they. Oh my god, that that was a little bit of over. Oh my god! Oh my god, the the chariots are wacky in and on itself, but with the cannons on them. Oh, this is an absolute mess. What are, what is going to happen? You think? I think the chariots are going to. I think the chariots are going to lose, actually. The blue team, for some weird reason. There's only one cavalry. Look at that, still the red team wins. The chariots are so freaking unreliable, it's not even normal. Okay, well, this is uh, kind of inspired, I guess, by other people I've seen doing this, but this is kind of like um, some sort of scenario where you would have one civilized and disciplined army against a uh, unorganized uh, band of uh, barbarians, I guess. So I got the shield units over here with um, with uh, with uh, spearmen in in between, and I've got lots of archers to back them up, and I've got one chariot because I mean cavalry support seems quite vital. And um, these guys, they have got a lot of barbarian units. They've got some peasants, and they've got a whole row of poachers because poachers seem like the more uncivilized equivalent of archers. Although I've seen that uh, poachers are actually. They beat archers in a battle somehow, so that's quite weird. But let's uh, let's see how this plays out. Quite laggy to begin with. The cavalry runs into that group. A lot of them die already. Oh my god, this is so fucking laggy. Okay, well, the red team doesn't actually seem to hold up quite well. It seems like the barbarian hordes are actually a whole lot stronger than I thought. Are they not? No, no, it's bodies lying around. 
Okay, so discipline is uh, quite important in the field of battle, I'd say. Although, uh, good luck taking down these poachers. Look at that rate of fire. My god. They don't really have a, a lot of range. Look at that. One spearman is taking down four of them. Uh, I don't think our cavalry did a whole lot. And this camera angle is, is uh, horrible, I know. Oh, look at all the bodies lying down, though. It would have been even cooler if I could have uh, taken them down without taking any casualties. What is he even shooting at? <laughs> it looked like he took him his bow and just left off with it. No, that's not the case. Yeah, you're not going to win that, fella. All right. Well, there's lots of bodies lying around. We still have readies over here. What are they even trying? You got archers against poachers, and poachers will win that for some weird reason. We got people running all the way over there. Why? Why though? What are you doing? Is this some sort of uh, battle ritual? Because it's not working. You're not doing anything. Okay, let's take a look, at, look around. And it's actually a blue victory, so it seems like uh, Barbarian... Um, well, willingness to die, I guess. Willingness to win is a lot more important than discipline and such. Very well. Well, if you might be able to tell, I'm not too creative when it comes to things like this. Uh, if you think that there's going to be uh, like a setup that's going to be very um, interesting then please by all means let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll try to implement that and have some nice battles that way. Anyway thank you very much for watching and as always have a good one. Cheers!